Great. It's a great honor that you are all here. And uh, we are here conducting this Educators Council meeting for the past uh, seven to eight years. We have started this Pelby International Company uh, 14 years back, really because of your great, all of your great support, this company is growing very well. And today we are here to talk about fluency pro building projects of, for social transformation via UN's Human Security for All campaign. So we have done as much as we can in the accuracy part of English. And that's why continuously for the past 10 years, you're all taking the program this year. Increasingly, many schools are taking it for curriculum integration and full school participation. Thank you so much for your overwhelming uh, support in this program. And thanks a ton. And always, uh, we started the career in the first 15 years supporting social projects. We started this as an NGO. Again, we have converted Spelby also as an NGO, Spelby International Foundation for Human Excellence. So that is the uh, new uh, look of Spelby, new name of it. So we have uh, formed this as a foundation. And what are we doing here? Okay, we are here on language development projects for these many years. Our prime focus was like to make them all employable. So what is that which is uh, there as an impediment in employability world? We thought we should do language development, not just because like they should speak in English, but because they should all understand all the subjects very well, primarily. So that was the uh, thought in which we started this. And now for fluency projects, it would be very nice, you know, like if they have a global outlook, if they start attending conferences, if they start attending, taking up initiatives, if they start un understanding not only just students, but also educators. I see even when we conduct Spelby projects, I see educators asking me, like, why not we write a test? Why not we get a, a certificate? Why not we get ourselves qualified? Why not we attend international conferences? Yes, this is the time now. So we have brought this and with us, we have today Gary Jacobs, sir, who's, uh, I'll introduce him uh, well here, executive uh, chairman for global campaign on human security for all. He's the president of World Academy of Arts and Science. Hope some of you would have gone to the link of World Academy of Arts and Science and seen, all, uh, some of you would have seen uh, who's Mr. Gary Jacobs also, he's a person uh, who has been uh, uh, working for uh, great national development programs and international development programs. And I'm seeing uh, Gary sir for the past uh, more than 20 years of time, uh, connecting, um, uh, being as a key uh, speaker in many educational forums, uh, um, being a head of uh, many programs across many other nations, helping them out in uh, designing their uh, um, uh, focus, uh, look out on how education need to be improved. And there are many things. Uh, I've seen him in many forums like um, uh, Uncommon Opportunity. There was a forum in which I've, I've seen him uh, doing a very great job. Uh, like that, I've participated only in few of the things, but then I keep uh, listening and reading about him. It's not just him, it's a team which is working on all these human security concepts for the past 20 years. I've, uh, first, I, uh, I uh, came in touch with him through a book, uh, Kamadenu, where they've already written on all these concepts, what we are going to talk about, what the world is doing. I've seen them along with Sri Karmayogi, a uh, guru of us, and I've seen him having already written all the concepts on what world should do, what the nation should do, uh, to make uh, a secured environment and where on opportunities are there. So they also released the book, Uncommon Opportunity. And then uh, Sir has released books like Vital Difference, Vital Corporation. He's a man who is a corporate consultant too. He has been to many countries, other countries, and then interviewed people and then written books on what makes people to uh, really uh, be uh, progressive. So with um, from a man with and um, recently also he has released the book the book and uh, we are also fortunate he has worked in many of Indian projects and many of much of his time he has spent in India too and uh, we are very fortunate to welcome you uh, here sir and uh, he is here and uh, before we invite him we would like to uh, play a video on what he is going to uh, speak. And uh, so this is uh, Gary Jacobs, sir. 
and uh, he is uh, this project is hs for a human uh, security for all global campaign of the united nations trust fund for human security so very big banner also world academy for arts and science and this is an organization started by Albert Einstein and few other uh, people. And they're all doing a great job for many, many years. And let us see what is uh, Gary sir is giving for us in this meeting. And before that, let's start the video. We have a short video to play uh, before sir starts the program. For many people, today's world is insecure full of threats on many fronts. Violent conflicts, natural disasters, persistent poverty, epidemics and economic downturns endanger peace, stability, and sustainable development. These threats are no longer isolated events limited to national borders. Their destruction travels the globe with great consequences on all societies. We cannot face these insecurities alone. We need to rise above our national and individual differences as one human family with human security for all. Human security is a people-centered view of what it means to be safe and secure. Faced with unprecedented challenges, the world requires urgent responses and innovative solutions Next generation and human-centered technology carry the potential to reshape our future. Join us on a mission to bring human security for all through technology. Let us rise together to reach our potential and leave no one behind. So now we warmly welcome Gary Jacobs, sir, to be with you all for the next 20 minutes to explore what educational institutions can do on this human security for all concepts. Welcome, sir. Thank you, David Cunny, for your introduction and uh, my greetings and good morning to all of you who have joined the webinar. It's a great pleasure to be talking to you today. Uh, David Cunny gave me such an extensive introduction, it's embarrassing, but she forgot to tell you one thing, that I'm actually living in South India in Pondicherry, and I'm speaking to you from India right now even though most of my work is at the global level. I also run an NGO here uh, and have been associated for more than 50 years. Uh, I'm representing the world, for this meeting, I'm representing the World Academy of Art and Science, which David Cunney mentioned. We were founded in 1960 by very eminent intellectuals from around the world. We have about 750 fellows elected for life from more than 80 countries now. The spe specific topic for today is the global campaign, which we launched in January of this year in collaboration with the United Nations Trust Fund on Human Security. Uh, the human security is an idea that was first introduced by the United Nations in 1994 to shift the focus of attention away from the competition of nation states for, uh, for national competition to the fact that we need security for every human being on earth. Uh, in recent years, we've seen just how important that security is and how much it's threatened by global events like COVID, which we went through for two years in the lockdown. I was here for that time. Uh, the war in Ukraine, which is impacting life all over the world, economies, employment, food supply for Africa, and so, so, so forth. And climate change, of course, which has not yet really arrived. It's only making the, the world a hotter place to be all the time, and it's already uh, too hot. Uh, and of course, now in the headlines for the last six months, particularly, the security concerns about artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, which offers so many miraculous benefits, but also risks and threats to the security of uh, millions of people who have jobs today or are wondering about whether they'll have the jobs in the future and so forth. So the concept of human security that the UN is promoting 
and uh, is one that looks at seven major dimensions of personal life. This is a this is about the security of human beings, about individuals. It's something we can all relate to. Uh, it's the food security, health security, employment and economic security, the political security of safety and human rights in a democratic society, security of our communities where we feel safe walking around and our communities and minorities are treated safely, and individual security, the, the safety, the sense of safety and comfort that we have. And finally, of course, very important, is the environmental security, uh, because so many of the threats that we face today relate to the environment, the rising temperature, the rising sea levels, the shortages of water, uh, pollution, and, and so forth. So that's what we're talking about uh, when we talk about human security. The campaign was launched. We've covered, we talked to shareholders, stakeholders in many fields. We launched the campaign uh, in early January at the Consumer Electronics Show in, in the United States, the largest technology event in the world by the leading technology companies in the world, all of which you know them and many of them are using their products like Google and Apple and Facebook uh, and uh, Amazon and uh, Microsoft and so forth. Uh, there were 120,000 experts and business leaders from the industry gathered together to talk about what is the relevance of human security to them, or actually to turn it around, what is the relevance of their work to meeting the human security needs of humanity? And after a four day program, uh, we discussed so many opportunities and so many things that can be done to enhance human security. In fact, one of our most interesting presentations was about the work done in India where the introduction, introduction of what we call fintech or the, for financial inclusion, the UPI uh, software that we all use on our mobiles now and everything, uh, few people realize that in the last seven years, 500 million Indians have been brought into the banking system, the lower levels, economic levels of the society through this very innovative technology. And through our uh, our partners, we actually brought India, uh, a leading spokesman from India to the UN in New York, where they released, announced that they're offering, India's offering this technology to the whole world for the benefit of uh, those who are not yet into the financial system in many other countries around the world. And India's uh, gesture was highly celebrated. So we're talking about practical ways in which we can benefit all sections of humanity at all levels and in all countries, because we all face threats to our human security. Even the most wealthy will be uh, helpless if climate change does all that some of the scientists predict it may do. So one of the keys for us has always been the, the central importance of education. My understanding about education is uh, a very wise man told me this 40, 50 years ago. Education is the means that human beings have invented to pass on cumulative knowledge, experience, wisdom from past generations to the future generations. So we don't have to reinv reinvent the wheel uh, and, 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 and rediscover new worlds and everything else. We keep learning and, and more and more and passing that on so the next generation can be better off, more knowledgeable, more skillful, better equipped than we are, and the world can continue to evolve. The problem we face today is that the world is changing so quickly, and it's changing in so many ways, and it's becoming so, so complex. Everything's interconnected with everything else. If you change uh, the internet, you change if politics, you change education, you change economy, uh, you change the way we buy our products, you change the way we get married, uh, and so forth and so on. It's becoming more and more difficult for the educational system to keep up with the pace of change in the world we live in. About three months ago, we conducted a conference in collaboration with 
the UN network, they call it the SDSN network of 1,750 universities around the world who are working on sustainable development goals for the world at large. And we asked them a question. These were educators from many, many distinguished educational institutions. This was higher education at this time, mostly. And we asked them the question, to what extent is your education, is the education you're giving your students preparing them for the rapidly changing, challenging environment in which they're going to enter the workforce and grow up and raise children uh, in the years to come? And there was a almost unanimous view that we're far behind. Even the leading universities, even the leading education in the, in the top countries in the world, economically advanced, I mean, uh, are far behind in changing and evolving our curriculum to really help the students understand what's going on in the world today, understanding how it's changing, understanding how employment's going to change in the world, uh, jobs are going to change, technology is going to change. How do we prepare now for a world that we don't know what it's going to be? five or 10 years from now? What is the knowledge we need? What are the skills we need? What is the understanding we need? And what is the capacity for learning so we can keep learning throughout our lives? And this was not a question of some special course on a special topic called human security, because the truth is human security applies to all the topics and all the academic disciplines. And we had 25 different sessions on covering everything from basic science and social sciences, literature, the arts, humanities, law, medicine, business, technology, and engineering. And in every case, we asked these top scholars from around the world, think about what you are teaching your students today, or rather what they're learning today, and how far are we really equipping them to be successful in the world that's still yet emerging? Uh, we talk about in human security, these seven or eight different dimensions, food security, how far as every individual, not just the, the nutritionist or the agriculturalist uh, learning, but what should everybody understand about uh, what healthy food is in a world that's changing, what chemical content in food is, how India achieved its green revolution. Uh, I happen to have been uh, had the privilege of knowing the founder, the real creator of the Green Revolution in India. And I heard the story right from his uh, uh, per personal story. You know, it took India 10,000 years to achieve 50 million tons of food grains. And in 1995, the FAO told India that based on the droughts we were having here at that time, that we might even up to 10 million Indians may die in the next few years because of food shortages. And when the Green Revolution was launched in 10 years, India doubled its food production. That is what it took 10,000 years to do in another 10 years, India doubled it. It sounds up, up, almost unbelievable, but that's actually what happened. How did it do that? That was a program that really tapped the energies of this whole society, not just, it wasn't just a government effort. It was the farmers who produced that food. So human security is about how do we engage our people in the society? It's a participative approach. It's what business can do to address our human security needs, what NGOs can do, what research institutes can do. And of course, most of all, most importantly, it's what our educational institutions can do to really prepare youth for the new generations are coming. And it's fine that we're, India is doing so well in, in producing engineers for the future. Uh, the problem is that many of the predictions show that a lot of the jobs we're producing them for won't be around anymore in a few years because of artificial intelligence. Then what are they gonna do? How do we prepare them to be able to adapt and change and develop new skills throughout their lifetime because the world is changing so fast. It's about health and about the, how do we raise the health of the country? And 
though we've got a great deal of prosperity in India and an abundance in, in many places, we also have very severe uh, nutritional problems, health problems, uh, uh, problems in uh, childbirth and so forth and all. What are the options available to us for upgrading the health of people in all the communities all over the country? And then what can we do about environmental problems, which we all know the air quality. I grew up in Los Angeles and we knew what air problems were back in the 1960s uh, when there were days we had to close the schools. But now it's a worldwide phenomenon and very prominently in our metros in India. What should the citizens understand about that? What about the pollution, the pollution of the oceans with mount, mountains of plastics that are killing the uh, the the fish and and suffocating the the growth of uh, sea plants that we need to convert our uh, carbon dioxide into oxygen and all. We live in a global society now. We cannot live just locally concerned with what we do in our little uh, occupation. Our decisions matter and are impacting the rest of the world. And what other people are doing impacts us as well. So. Schools and educational institutions play a crucial role in determining the future of humanity. And we're trying to focus on that role in this project, in this campaign called Human Security for All. And it's a pleasure to meet you and interact with you. And we would like to work with you and help you in disseminating information, creating awareness among young people children from age 5, 10, all the way up, uh, we'll go all the way up through uh, university level, and on how they can be better prepared to be citizens in a global society that's changing so fast. Uh, the, and human security, as I said, it's not a specialized topic. It's not like something we study by, uh, by like global warming. It applies to every discipline. We had wonderful sessions with the, with business uh, top business universities in the world as to how business education has to change so business understands their role in addressing uh, uh, human security needs. Uh, how uh, the arts and cinema, if we're going to awaken our populations to the importance of change, the arts and cinema, uh, all of the arts play a crucial role in reaching out to us. The artists are much better communicators than the scientists are in, uh, in telling, in, in making things personal, making things understood to us as individuals, This what this means to me. And that's our question. What does human security mean to each and every one of us? And it differs from place to place, whether we live in a dry climate or a wet climate, in a cold climate or a warm climate that are prepared. We want to create opportunities for schools to work together through in collaboration with Spelby, who's our partner here uh, in India for education, uh, to prepare the future leaders. Uh, we want to emphasize the importance of communities working together. We can none of us can do this alone. Uh, we want to empower students to not just be recipients of information, but to take action, to do things, to think for themselves how these problems can be solved, to invent new solutions, to try out new solutions. And after they leave the educational system, to become entrepreneurs, to tap the opportunities as well as meet the needs that these, that we want them to be agents of change. Our goal is to reach hundreds of thousands of students in India. This is the first country where we're coming for, with this program. We're going to countries all over the world in different projects. But for this one, which is so important, India is our model, our pilot, from which we're going to extend to countries and, and students all over the world. This program emphasizes some critical values, like critical thinking. As you know, education is not just about memorizing uh, the textbook and getting the right answer in an examination. It's the capacity to think for ourselves and solve problems for which there are no answers in the textbook. Maybe even the questions aren't there yet. Uh, it's about empathy and understanding the security needs of other people and how we, whether they're in our community or in other parts of the world and what we can do to support them. It's about active citizen engagement. 
how can we teach our individual our students that it's not just you have to grow up and get a job and get uh, earn money and marry yourself you're part of a larger society and there are ways you can contribute to it and the future of the society is going to depend on you going to depend on today's youth and how much they're motivated how much they understand that the future is going to be built by them not by us it's a, a question of responsible citizenship and leadership skills. So what we'd like to do in this program is to help schools integrate the issues, the topics, the themes of human security into the existing curriculum, into curriculum regarding technology, about business, economy, arts, cinema, language, and literature, very important because literature is one of the most, or I'd say the most powerful way, cinema and literature, for conveying real life uh, uh, awareness, personal awareness to students. Sciences of all description, of course, environment, geography, history, all subjects. And of course, this is a challenge for teachers as well, because te education for teachers is, tends to be in a narrow, particular focused discipline but the needs of society are global. They don't, they don't fit into any discipline anymore. All the disciplines are coordinating now and learning to work together because the, ch the challenges are transdisciplinary. The, that's, why the human, that's why we say human security, the link between all the disciplines, we teach about a thousand in the United States, disciplines and sub the link between them all is, how does it impact on people? including the environmental disciplines, because we're nowhere in the world if we don't have a healthy environment as well. So we want this program to also help educators, help teachers to acquire the perspectives, uh, the knowledge and the capacities to, uh, to impart new perspectives to their students, regardless of what specialized uh, training they've had or what specialized courses. There's a way to bring everything into this wider Perfume. We're trying to encourage partnerships and collaborations. We're collaborating with big businesses that I mentioned. We're doing it with the religious organizations around the world, with parliamentarians. We just read, ran a, a webinar last week uh, for the Interparliamentary Union, which is 170 parliaments of the world. They represent most of the elected officials of the world at the national level how we can bring human security into their work. We met yesterday with the largest, most important group of international NGOs in the world and how we're partnering with them to bring human security more into, into their... Uh, uh, we're going to have uh, 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 cinema festivals with, uh, with artists who are filmmakers on how they can bring themes of human security into their work and art exhibitions and so forth. So uh, this is our uh, invitation. Uh, this is our request. We would like to work with you. Uh, we think that uh, working with, with Spellby, we can deliver a, a, a wonderful program that the students will benefit from. That's our only motive in, in doing it, uh, to empower them, to teach them how to think differently and understand, to encourage them to form clubs and organizations and projects within the school. Uh, to study success stories uh, of what has worked in the past, like I mentioned, Green Revolution or White Revolution or the Grameen Bank in, Bang in Bangladesh or whatever it is. There are so many examples uh, to, uh, to study what's available so they're better equipped in that way. So I'd like to open this up if there are any questions. Uh, that you have about the program. I think uh, David, David Cunney can uh, do a good job of uh, uh, communicating what we are planning to uh, deliver and outreach, but even generally about anything I've set up until now, please feel free to raise it. You can uh, type in the chat box. Your, your questions can be posted in the chat box. Your question, your comments, your agreement, <laughs> your enthusiasm, you can uh, register in the chat box. Uh, 
I have a question while we're waiting for their questions. Yes. I'd be interested to know how many of your uh, institutions are presently teaching about what the UN calls the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, you can uh, respond uh, shortly as V, 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 just uh, uh, type W, E. So that uh, you can click on that. I mentioned that because, you know, we really live in unique times. I mean, it's sometimes we forget how unique this is. It's only back in 1948 that, that, the, U, that the governments of the world for the first time agreed that there are universal values that every human being and rights that every human being should have. Before that, we were all having our own ideas and the world came together and drafted the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which you must be teaching uh, in some classes in your schools. It was a breakthrough event, but that was only a list of ideals. The world was not coming and saying, now we have to, we're gonna deliver all of these human rights at, at one time. It's just, this is the ideal that we aspire for. But in 2015, 193 countries of the world came together to create what they called Agenda 2030, which was 17 sustainable development goals that would address all the major dimensions of human life. And for those of you who are already very familiar with the SDGs, human security is not an alternative idea. It's not a different program. The, the, the only difference with human security is it's put in personal terms. It's what the sustainable development goals means to us as people. It's not just the work that na national governments have to do or UN agencies want to do uh, 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 on big projects or the financial institute. It's what does it mean to us and what can we do? I gave the example of Green Revolution because it's no, it's not governments and scientists that developed India's food supply. It's the farmers that did. How can and they were mobilized? They were given the conditions they needed, the knowledge they needed, the opportunities they needed to develop themselves. And that's what the human security program is about. How our communities can become much more active and adaptive and not expect a government to do everything. No government has ever developed a country. A government can help people develop the country. And of course, giving a good education is one of the things uh, that's most important about the role of government in, in fostering that. So there is one question. Uh, mm -hmm. How to deal today's uh, students to focus more on academics as well as activities? So this is a question from Manitya. So like well, uh, from academics, how to make them involve in activities also? You know, we run a school here in Pondicherry. It's a top school in Pondicherry called Primrose. Uh, and we know the difficulties and challenges that educators have, uh, especially in school education today. Uh, one, because of uh, uh, government constantly raising and changing the standards. And the other, because our, the parents very often what they want for their kids and what they think is really good for their kids is not the thing that's really going to prepare their children uh, for the future generation. And we, we know the challenges that you have in education in the classroom or in, at the administrative level in, because educators know better. The answer on a, an examination that gets you into another school or gets you is not the real knowledge that's going to get you through life in a success. But there's so much of competition just to go after the examination scores that it's very difficult to focus on what real learning, what real understanding and expression of it is. And that's the challenge. And that's what we want to work through creative programs. We want to make this personal to people. We want the student to understand this is not some abstract knowledge that you memorize because of an exam. This is. The, these are the issues that are real for your family, for your community, uh, for people around you. And it's for life. And, you know, uh, business people, they, go, they may go through and get an MBA, for example, and then start a, uh, uh, we have the, one of our close associates runs the most success, largest, most successful business college for logistics and supply chain management. And he tried teaching all the technical knowledge to his team uh, from experts in the field 
of what they had to do learn if they were going to go into the field where we India needs lakhs and lakhs, 20 lakhs or more of, of uh, uh, jobs are available. And he found it just doesn't work. The student memorizes the, 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 the facts in the textbook or in the exam, but when he gets into the company, he really doesn't understand, he doesn't have the practical knowledge he needs. So they completely shifted the focus. Instead of talking about logistics as an abstract topic, they started talking about the FIFA uh, international football uh, the, the, the problems when it rains too heavily in Kerala, uh, what, how people move around for festivals, how the products are moved. Or, he talked about how the society really works, which is all about logistics. So he took that abstract kind of artificial way of looking at it and applied it uh, in practice, in the life of the students, that they could understand because it's the life they live uh, in. Yeah. And the result was they were so successful <laughs> that their employment, dub their uh, enrollment doubled. The government of India came to them and asked, what are you doing? What are you teaching your kids? Uh, they, they, and when the FIFA uh, World Cup was held in uh, Qatar a few months ago, uh, the main group of those who were running the, the, the younger team that was running the event were all coming from his college because they understood life. They understood the knowledge in life. And that's a challenge. That's why the activities are so important. Yeah, there are uh, two schools who are uh, saying like they are already with uh, SDG goals. Delhi Public School, Bangalore North aims to impl implement all 17 goals not only in the classroom and infrastructure, but also to make it inclusive to all members of the DPSBN family. So they are, they are a group of school. And another school from Koil Petit, it's a rural area uh, near Tutikarin. So Ravila from uh, KRA uh, CBSE matriculation school, they say they are already implementing, uh, um, they have clubs for SDG goals and they are encouraging teachers also to participate in all the 17 SDG. And there are some questions again and again on the same thing, like uh, the career oriented rather than considering like how to uh, bring this into activity. Maybe I can uh, say one thing, uh, like uh, Spellbee International involved itself here because uh, since we are into language development activities, we wanted to put the uh, fluency part of it. Uh, let it be like all the schools are interested in uh, public speaking. All the schools are interested in making them to write essays to participate in global campaigns, to participate in national and international conferences. All these things can be uh, done in this topic, human uh, uh, security concepts. And also we are taking history. When we are taking history, definitely we can include this. So it's uh, like we need to train the teachers a bit. So that work we can always do. We have a monthly webinar. Uh, more people can be brought from uh, hs 4 also to the meetings. Today, the meeting we have seen, we are seeing very less number. Maybe uh, because of like many schools are saying today they have the parent teachers meeting since it's a second Saturday, maybe because of that. And uh, let's see, like we can guide you uh, very well on how to include this into the curriculum itself so that it will not be an extra uh, job for us. And uh, yeah, there are many schools are saying, yes, they are interested to include and uh, they're wonderful to hear uh, from you. Kerry uh, Rotter, rather than considering child interest, how to ensure Okay, somebody is saying in current scenario, education is career oriented, rather considering child's interest, how to ensure human security. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a question, but uh, yeah, would you like to answer, sir? Well, two, uh, two comments. I think yeah. it's very, uh, and, and you, you touched on it. Human security is not another subject. It's a subject that relates to every subject. And the comment that you just made about the children is only interested in themselves. <laughs> Human security is about ourselves. <laughs> we're only we're teaching students about their life in the world that they, that we live in at the local level, at the national level, and at the and we are all the same world. If it gets hotter, it gets hotter for everybody, <laughs> uh, not just for uh, in one place and not another. Uh, uh, so I think that's that's why we're working with with Spellby to try to introduce practical programming, not all at once, not as a, a, not as a burden on the education, something that can make the education more relevant to their lives, to their family, to the community and all in a gradual process. We start and gradually 
uh, raise questions and, and, and give ideas and exercises, which will help make whatever teach you're teaching. If you're teaching literature, wonderful. We, we use the literature as a, main, as a means. We do it here in Pondicherry, a very powerful tool to educate youth about what they need to know. It's about life. This is a life oriented uh, or, uh, education, a life education from the personal perspective. Everybody wants security. We all have security needs. Uh, and so they ma we make what they're learning more relevant to them personally. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, like for, I, I think they, they have the similar question only. That's all. The few schools are saying, few more schools, one or two more schools are saying they are participating and many other schools are even seeing interest to participate further. And uh, so how to, like in our uh, upcoming presentations, we have solutions for all these things. So let us thank uh, Gary, sir, for having come and spent with us a uh, good amount of time and looking forward to meet you in further uh, webinars, sir. Thank you. Thank you, David Cunney. Thanks for the opportunity and nice talking to you all. Bye Thank now. You very much, sir.